All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Julia. Yes, good evening, everyone. My name is Julia Sokolowska, and I'm an early college coordinator here at Hancock. Uh, my job is to oversee all uh, college credit options that are offered to high school students in our area, which is Northern Santa Barbara County. So uh, we will go through the uh, PowerPoint today, and uh, we'll give you some information about the program and how to apply, how to register, and all of that. At the end, we'll go through our website. I'll show you where to find information, how to look for classes, how to submit forms. I'll show you our portal. I will take all your questions. So with that said, um, let me share my screen and start the presentation. So if at any point you feel confused or have a uh, question, please put them in the chat. Mr. Gonzalez and Abigail Gomez will be monitoring it and they will interrupt me if needed. If I go too fast or something is maybe something's confusing. So don't uh, wait until the last minute, put in your uh, questions right away. Okay, so let me start the show. Okay, so college now, college credit courses for high school students. So today we talk about the information about the program, registration steps and forms, our website and my Hancock portal, and I'll take your questions and answers. So what is college credit? So for those of you who never heard about that term, so let me clarify something uh, for you. So college credit courses or college course is a class you take at a community college or a university. It does have certain value for your education. So courses are measured in units or credits. So for example, a lecture course, a typical lecture course at the community college is a three unit course. So to put it into the perspective, you know, like you need credits to graduate high school in particular areas. So a typical associate's degree at Allen Hancock is about 60 units. So in order to get a degree at Hancock or to get a degree for transfer at Hancock, you will need about 60 units uh, to complete. So the more classes you take, the faster you go, through uh, your academic journey and you end up with a degree. So the good thing is that many of our courses are transferable to UCs and CSUs of your choice, especially in California. They are also transferable to private colleges, however, with some exceptions. So, but you, you can be safe if it's posted on our website that is transferable to the public universities in California, it will be. So why do you need college credit? So why do you need all of that? So first of all, it's very good for you. It helps you grow academically. Uh, to be honest, we run research every year and it does show that uh, high school students who take college courses tend to have higher GPA at high school at Hancock. They usually uh, enter community college uh, earlier uh, and or in their, not, don't enter as a first time student, but as a sophomore and you can transfer earlier to a university. So if you completed so many units, let's say 20 or 24, it accounts for the whole year of college. So the more you take now, the less you will have to take at the uh, academic institution of your choice after graduation. And with that said, it of course uh, translates to a lot of savings on your college tuition. As a high school student, the state of California pays your tuition at Hancock. So you will have less to pay and less financial aid, if, especially if you're not eligible for financial aid or if the scholarship that you acquired will not cover everything. So the more you do now, the less you'll have to pay for later. College credit is good for you too, because once you enter, especially on college now, taking classes on our campuses, you're introduced to college environment earlier. So once you graduate, everything will be familiar to you. And many processes at colleges are similar, like admissions and registration. There are some nuances in different, different portals and systems we use. But in general, the idea of how to go to college, what is academic rigor, how to register, how to maintain your GPA, you will, be, you, you will know it now. It will make your transition much easier. So let's see what college options we have for students uh, at Hancock. So there are four of them. Um, and the second bullet you probably might be familiar with concurrent enrollment. And I know that actually Pioneer Valley High School is our 
biggest school with the largest course offerings in Northern Sarawara County for concurrent enrollment. So those of you who take college classes as concurrent at your high school, you're already getting a lot of credit. Today, however, we are talking about college now. The program is very similar. There's only one key difference that we'll talk a little bit later. So what is college now? So college now, unlike concurrent enrollment that you take at your high school, is a class you can enroll in on our campuses. Santa Maria, in Lompoc, San Ynez, or online. So everything that is not at your high school on our campuses is college now program. So it is uh, open to all local high schools in our county and SLO, and also for homeschool students. So if you have siblings or uh, maybe relatives who are homeschooled and wondering if they can take a course at, uh, at Hancock, they can. So who is eligible? So the general rule is that high school students in 11th and 12th grades, however, there are exceptions. So if you're a freshman and sophomore, don't, don't be disappointed because this program is also open to you. The only difference is that you will need to fill out another piece of paper, which we call an appeal. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later. So you must reside in Santa Barbara or Slow County, like I said, and uh, you all are. So if you have taken uh, classes before at Hancock on your own or through concurrent, your GPA at Hancock must be at least 2.0 in order to participate in the program. If your GPA for some reason uh, is below 2.0, you can also appeal that, fill out a form. However, in this particular case, we recommend wait a little bit, maybe one year before uh, joining the program so you can up your GPA. So what courses can you take? Uh, there is a big list. So it used to be a two page list. Uh, so today I received a new list for 2022, 2023. It is longer. So we are offer a lot of courses in almost all of our departments from career technical education to uh, A3G requirements, foreign languages, science, STEM, you name it. So I'll show you the list a little bit later, but this is a, a, a lot of offerings. So you will find absolutely uh, everything on there that you need. This list is updated annually, and this is important because once you go through the class search and select the classes, please reference this list to make sure that the class you like is on that. Uh, so, and of course, uh, if you take a class at Hancock and it has a prerequisite, you must meet this prerequisite, and I'll show you that in a little bit more detail. So, how do you go about registering uh, for a college class? So steps to enrollment, and I will share this PowerPoint and I will share actually a checklist with your counselors that I developed. This is just one page checklist with clickable links that will guide, guide you through that. So I will put it in the chat a little later and also share with your counselor so you can refer to that. Or you can just take a picture of, uh, or a screenshot of the screen. So step number one, meet with your high school counselor. Step number two, apply for admission online if required. Step three, set up my Hancock portal email. Step four, complete and submit college now paperwork. And step five, register for classes and pay fees. This one is really important. And we go now through each step in more detail. So meet with your counselors. Why is it in red? Why is it so important? So I will highly advise you talk to your high school counselor before you select any class. They know you much better than Alan Hancock does, or me, or people who process paperwork. They know where you stand academically. They know what course will be first applied to a high school credit and the class that you might transfer you. So they know your academic history. So talk to them prior to selecting a course. So note, high school students are limited to six units per semester, which is approximately two classes. So some classes are more than three units. So six classes, six units. When you meet with your counselor, uh, ask them how you can get your unofficial transcript. And also ask them how will they prefer to sign your paper because they can sign it electronically, they can sign a paper copy. So discuss all these uh, things with your counselor when you meet. So then you have to apply for admission. So as any college, we have admissions office and you have to apply for admission. So application is available on Alan Hancock website. Uh, it's all done online. You don't have to do it in person. Uh, you create a CCC account 
and then you complete the application. So for those of you, and I know there are many at PV who took a class in fall 2020 and spring 2021, you don't have to do that. So, I, I, so, so fall 2021, I have to change the PowerPoint. Hmm, why is it? I thought I changed that. So people who took a class in uh, fall 2021 and spring 2022, so this academic year, so last fall and this spring, you don't have to apply for admission. Your application is current. So the idea behind that is, if you say took a broad class your freshman year, didn't do anything your sophomore year, but you're, not, you're now a junior, then you would need to apply for admission. But if you continue taking at least one class a year, your application will be considered current. Also note that in summer, uh, we already see you one grade ahead. So freshmen, as seen by Alan Hancock, as sophomores in summer. So juniors, we see you as seniors in summer. So for the next academic year, you already will be uh, one grade higher than you are now. So what information is needed for admission application if you haven't completed yet? You will need to know your social security if you have one. If you don't have one, it's okay. You just check another box. But if you have one, it's highly recommended that you put it right away. So my recommendation is always uh, complete the application with the help of your parent, because there's some crucial information you would like to have uh, input into your record correctly from the first time. So social security, if, if you have one, uh, valid personal email address. Uh, I don't recommend using a high school address. And the reason behind that is, uh, first of all, once you um, graduate, you don't have access to your high school emails. You will not be able to reset your account. And second of all, uh, your high school uh, email server sometimes blocks uh, certain uh, emails coming uh, from admissions or from CCC. So create a Google account if you don't have one or Gym or Yahoo whatever works for you. So you need to know your permanent address. So where you live, again, ask your parents if you're not sure, especially if you moved recently. So if you are not a US, US citizen, you need to know the number uh, and status uh, on your green card, uh, its issues and expiration dates. And again, if you don't have these documents, it's also fine. There's another box you check and you move on. It does not prevent you from going to college. For high school seniors, it's highly recommended to put in your GPA for math and English grades because it gives you your math and English placement. It is especially important because math is, uh, is a prerequisite. So certain level of math is a prerequisite for many of our STEM courses as well as math and even uh, chemistry and biology. So put the grades in you can find them, I think, in your areas, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, correct, and or on your unofficial transcript. Yes, they can find it in their areas or their transcript, which they do have access in their areas as well. So once you do admission application, you receive and two emails from us. One will be from CCC, which stands for California Community Colleges, that you created an account and you submit the application. Another will be from us. It will give you your H number, which is a Hancock student ID number, and your username for the portal. So follow instructions in the email. They're pretty straight, straightforward and set up your account as new users. So if you're unable to log in for some reason, there are uh, ways to uh, contact our help desk. You could forget password or forgot username, get in touch with them. So they will help you out to set up an account. Why is it important? Unlike concurrent enrollment, when we register you back office, this time you will be responsible to, for doing it yourself. So you are responsible for registering for a class, paying your fees, and dropping the class in case you cannot complete it for, for, for a variety of reasons. So step number four is the boring paperwork. Uh, so complete paperwork for each term. But what does it mean? For example, you look at the class and say, hey, I would like to take some in summer and some in fall. So you will need petition for each term separately. So one for summer, one for fall. If you're junior or senior, you only need two documents to submit, which is petition for enrollment and your unofficial high school transcript. We talked to, uh, about an appeal and prereq appeal in the next slide. 
So petition for enrollment is located on the website. I show you where it's, where it's at. You have to complete all fields, collect three signatures, student, parent, high school principal, so designee. So in your case at PV, every counselor and PV can sign your paperwork. So signatures are accepted, wet signatures or Adobe sign signatures, electronic signatures. So why would you need an appeal or might need an appeal? So like I said before, if you're a freshman or sophomore, you would need an appeal. Uh, if you want to take more than six units, you would need an appeal. And if your GPA at Hancock is below 2.0, this you might not know because you might not know how to check it on my Hancock portal. Uh, our admissions fund is clear, clears your paperwork. If they notice something like that, they will contact you and alert you that the appeal is needed. So uh, it sounds like a lot of appeals. However, it is just one form. So it is one form and you just check the box that applies to you. It's also available on the website. So with prerequisites, uh, I highly recommend you check your math and English placement if you're planning on enrolling in STEM heavy, math heavy science courses. Uh, sometimes it's need updating. If you were a sophomore when you completed application, so these grades are long gone, maybe you're now a senior and you completed already some math, so it will uh, improve. However, if you still don't meet the requirement, you will need to apply for a prerequisite. If it's for math, a recommendation letter from high school counselor must be attached. Uh, it does take uh, longer for these appeals to go approved because they go a long route with the department and counseling and all of that. The first three appeals are easier to approve. This one just takes more time. Why I'm telling you that? Uh, so plan ahead. If you check your math placement and you wanna take a heavy math class, think about that. Okay, maybe I should start doing my paperwork to get it done earlier so because I have to wait for an appeal to be approved. Okay, how we submit forms. So you fill them out and you send it to your high school counselor. Fill your high school email or fill them another email with a message that's approved from the parent. Approved high school counselors will email you form and transcripts to admissions department. This is the case, uh, Ms. Gonzalez, correct? So your high school counselors usually send uh, paperwork. Yes, we, yeah, we, end up, we end up emailing all the documents um, to College Now admissions. Okay, if you would like to change this procedure, you can discuss it individually with, with each student uh, when they when they talk to you and collect your signatures because they can also uh, send everything by themselves now. Okay, register online. So once you send the paperwork, it's all cleared. You receive an email from uh, admissions. It says, hey, you're cleared to register. That's your registration date. These are the steps. So I thought they copied me today on the, one of the emails. It depends on what technician processes your paperwork. They either include step-by-step -step instructions or they send a little video. So you will get those instructions. What, once you get an email, wait for your registration date and register online. It's pretty simple and I'll show you how to do that. Like I said, there is a video about that. It's not a big deal. Usually it uh, takes five, 10 minutes. So once you receive an email that you're cleared, Go ahead and do it because uh, classes do fill up. So it might not be spot available. So don't wait until the last minute. Okay, so cost to attend. Uh, if you're taking class at current enrollment, you don't have to pay anything. So everything is taken care of. However, if you take a college now class on campus, you are responsible for a health fee which is $18 for summer semester and uh, $21 for fall semester. So textbooks are also uh, not provided by Hancock and are course specific. Uh, we have a lot of low cost options available and our uh, faculty uh, really takes care of the students and usually recommends a lot of open sources because we do understand uh, the textbooks might be a burden for some families to pay for. My recommendation is always, once you sign up for the class, you wait until the first day, you receive a syllabus from your teacher and you decide, and then you will have plenty of time to buy it either online or rent it from Amazon or go to our AMP campus or use a free source. So, so here, let me see, I'm thinking that my next slide might not be up to date. Let me see. 
yeah, let me just stop sharing and I'll share just uh, just one second. I need to pull up another document. So for some reason, uh, let me see. Okay, okay, just one second. Let me find the slide because I I think I grabbed the one with the old dates, but I would like to give you the new dates for uh, registration. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, can you see that? Let me see. Hmm, it's not that one. Like just one sec. So let me. I apologize. Just one sec. So uh, for some reason, I just had this file for Heartland Charter. And I just, this is the PowerPoint that you sent me as well. Uh, there we go. Okay, there we go. So I found it. Uh, yeah, because the, your PowerPoint, the ones I sent to you, had the correct correct date. You're you're right, absolutely. So my apologies for that. So I found it. One, because both of them say say PV. Okay, summer twenty two, fall twenty twenty two. Class search opens April eleven for both semesters uh registration opens for high school students may 9. so what's the reason for that uh at hancock like in any other college we have a priority registration for certain groups uh it's usually foster youth uh, veterans uh returning students first time promise students and there are five or six categories unfortunately high school students are at the end of the line so what does it mean for you since class search is open and uh, paperwork is already accepted, don't wait until the last minute because you can basically register until the classes start, until June 13. But don't wait until the last minute. Get your paperwork done and cleared. Wait on, and on May 9, May 9, go ahead and register for the class right away. Uh, why? Like I said, the spot might not be available. So if if that's the case, don't get frustrated. Put yourself on the wait list. Uh, there is a lot of movement in the beginning of the semester, and it's in many cases you will get a spot. So, and uh, last day to add and to drop the course are also course specific. When I show you class search, you'll go over it so you can see how to look for it and what's important. So, I didn't put them all here because they are course specific, like I said. So, final exams. July 21st for some courses, August 4th for others. If you're planning any family trips in summer, please make sure you're here for finals. Final uh, exam is a big part, one of the largest parts for the final grade. So if you miss the final exam, guess what grade you will receive, non-passing. So we would like to avoid that. So please um, plan accordingly. So on August 12th, your grades are finalized. So if you need to send transcripts to your universities of your choice, if you're applying, uh, the transcript will be available for summer, August 12th. I also share all um, college now and concurrent enrollment grades for all semesters at the end of each term with your administration and with an area joint. So if you forgot to bring your transcript to your school, uh, they, will, they might use my report to give you a credit for high school. Okay, so uh, we almost done. So get help if you got stuck. So I'll show you links in emails. So if at any point during registration you get stuck, please call us. I know high school help might not be available because many of your counselors and teachers will be on vacation. Uh, we do have staff working uh, during summer, so reach out to us for help. I want to also mention that um, as high school counselors, we cannot call Hancock to ask for your information. So it is your responsibility as a student to ask for help from Hancock when you need the help because we can't do it for you. So it's just when you go to college, it's basically everything on you, the student. So you have to make sure that if you're going to be taking college now classes, Get the help that you need when it comes to registration, reach out to your professors when you need help, because that is 
out of our area. Okay. Thank you for uh, mentioning it, uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, because it's a very important point. So once you submit that admission application and send paperwork to us, we see you as a regular student. So you receive a regular college credit. No one on your draft if it says you were in high school is a regular straightforward credit. And it comes with rules and responsibilities. So we see you as a regular student. It means we cannot share your information with anybody. So there are special, special laws and legislations that protect you. And it's part of college environment to be responsible, to uh, reach out for help if needed, to reach out to the professor, like Mrs. Gonzalez said, absolutely, to reach out to us for help. So that's college environment. Part of it, being a college student, is take care of these things. So help with admission application. Open CCC in Sacramento can afford to work 24-7. My recommendation is not to email them, to call. And again, they will not talk to, uh, they are not hanging out, uh, they will not talk to your parent, they will not talk to your counselor, they will call, uh, talk to you. For example, you completed application your freshman year with for Prod 301, you forgot all about that, now you cannot reset it, call them. They will ask you certain questions and all of that. And in many cases, I would say 99% of cases, they do help right on the spot and reset your account. So reach out to them. That's for admission application. Everything Hancock related, uh, we cannot, we don't work 24 seven, but we do, we, and we are open during business hours. So HC admissions records office, that's their email. You can email them, they do answer and phone. So answer me uh, and, uh, and uh, reach out to them if anything gets stuck. So uh, there are a couple of videos uh, and I sh shared it with the PowerPoint. So how to start it with a portal, how to register for a class. I also show you how to find it on the website. So there are a couple of videos that will be helpful for you. And so this is my contact information, especially in summer, if you got stuck and you need to drop a class or something happened that you cannot continue, please reach out to me right away. So I will not be able to give you academic advice because I'm, I'm not a counselor. However, I will help you troubleshoot some of the registration problems. If something goes wrong, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd like you to help as soon as I can so we can prevent any negative outcomes uh, in, in summer. Because it does sometimes happen if a student, and I have to tell you that, even though I don't want to, but it happens if a student is very excited, signs up for Art 101 in summer, registers, and forgets about that. And they think, okay, I'm not showing up, they will cross me out. And they won't. So in theory, they should, but they won't. And guess what? At the end of the semester, we end up with an F. And we really want to um, avoid it as much as possible because there is no reason for, for this to happen, okay? So before I go to the website, uh, do you have any questions? No questions. Okay. Okay, let me close this okay. one out. I, 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 did, I just got a question. If we have yeah. a comparing class this year, do we, still need an, an unofficial transcript. Unofficial transcript is required for each semester. Okay. It's, it's a high school transcript for each semester. The reason for that is it's not the grades because we don't check your grades other than for math and English. It's the, it's the proof that you are residing in a county and, and attending high school. So that's the proof that you are eligible to participate in the program. Okay, here's and, it, and it does change. You guys change schools, right? So I do know there is some movement in, inside the district and all of that. If people just, you, you know, move in to another state or another city. Okay, and uh, another question. Uh, I know that Alan Hancock offers free tuition for the first two years. Does this cut into that time frame? No. Well, you at high school, the state of California pays for you no matter what. So, and that uh, first age, uh, year free at AHC starts after you graduate. So you're not missing on anything and anything will be taken of you. And another question, do I have to appeal my grade if I got a D on a Hancock class? So on a Hancock class, uh, so getting a D, it does not necessarily mean that you will have a low GPA. For example, if you took a couple of courses and had like BCA, and only one is D, your GPA can still be above 2.0. So 
so to appeal the great if you uh, got a d let's say on history and uh, you don't appeal but you have three attempts to improve it so you can sign up for the class again and complete it successfully with a passing grade and uh, remember at high school what counts toward your graduation can be a D at college. So D stands for diploma, high school diploma, and C stands for college. In college, passing grade uh, is C. So if you have D or an F, you can repeat the course, the same course. You don't have to go right away this semester, but you can do it later. And if you get a better grade, it will be updated on your transcript. So then the D grade would disappear to say? Yes. Okay. Okay. If they take the same course and people do that. Yes. Um, there was another question. Yeah. So if they're taking a concurrent class right now, what other two papers do they need to um, submit? So for if they're in concurrent enrollment class, it's just one petition for enrollment and uh, unofficial transcript. Mm -hmm. So petition and so just a, unofficial. Yeah. Uh, petition and unofficial transfer. Actually, let, let me put the uh, let me put in the chat. Yeah, let me see what is that. Let me put in the chat the uh, I have the uh, I did like a special um, checklist for students. Let me put it in the chat right away. Okay. Chat for students. Okay. Oh, there. Okay. So, so there go. another question, Julia. Um, my son wants to enroll for summer, but we have vacation from 710 to 718. Will that mm -hmm. affect his grade? Uh, it depends on the instructor. So once you uh, start attending, I will first of all talk with this instructor right away or even uh, or even email the instructor uh, about their attendance policy before the class starts. Because some of them are strict on that some are not for example if your son would like to take an online class it doesn't matter where he takes it from if you go on vacation and you have access to uh, his canvas online he will be able at least to participate somehow uh, attendance is does not necessarily has a very heavy weight on the grade but again it depends on the instructor especially if you elect the in-person class. So with online, it will be easier. Was in person, especially like lab participation, if you're thinking something like biology or any lab-based course, so they will look at the attendance. So it just, the answer is, it depends. Okay. All right, we're good. Okay. okay, so let me go to the website and show you what we are talking about. Okay, so. Um, type in Hancock in Google search or hancockcollege.edu and you end up on our website. So everything is you need is on here. So um, so let's go to, if you scroll down just a little bit, so you can see the big red button is applied to Hancock. That's the link to admission application. So you go there, you follow the steps, read everything is on the screen. Usually you create an account, you submit the application. So everything is listed there. Everything, in fact, that I uh, said today can be found on our website in one way or another. For the webinar is just a nice way to put everything together and in context. So let's search for classes. Uh, let's search for classes and see what we can uh, have here. So you click on class search, very easy. You click on summer 2022, you click select term, you click on credit because that's what you want, the college credit. You click select class type. You can also tailor it by subject or location. Uh, what I recommend you to do for summer, not fall, because it's a big semester, just click the submit button. You will see everything that is offered at Hancock in summer. So when you scroll down, so they talk about different modalities, what everything means, but here is the list of classes. And like I said, every department is a presenter. So there's accounting, there is Ag, there is AJ, Intro to Criminal Justice, and all of that. Anthropology. So let's look at some of these courses and make sense of what all of this means in the class search. Okay. So if you look at AJ, let's say uh, 101. So that's one in the middle of the page, AJ 101. 
So you read about that and you say, okay, it's open. That's the CRN number, course number. The student, you need to register. It's worth three units or credits. The, the class meets on Monday, Wednesday, 8.30 to 11.45 in Santa Maria, building H, room 105. That's the instructor. Uh, these are the dates when the class starts and it's eight weeks. So most of the information is already here. So let's look at another um, course. Let's see um, Anthropology 101. So a little lore, let, let me pull it up just a little bit. Anthropology 101. So you can see here that in the campus it says online and then building it says online. So what it, here, there are no meeting times. So what it means is that this is a straightforward distance learning class. So you never see your instructor. You never go to the classroom. Uh, you can log in at 2 a.m., complete your assignment, participate in the discussion board or whatever is required, keep up with Canvas and all the assignments, and you're done with it. So um, be aware that um, online uh, is not necessarily translates to less work than in person. Because online, you have to do double the work. You have to do the homework and classwork. So it might seem like it's even more assignments than if you're be attending a class in person. So another thing I want to show you, let me just scroll down a little bit. Uh, so here, for example, in the middle, you see LVC. It means Lompoc, and it says Lompoc Valley Center. I just want to show you one I saw here. Oh, OK, maybe it's up here a little. Because there is another modality that is Zoom, and I want to show you how it looks like so you can distinguish between straightforward online. And um, so here you see classrooms and all of that. It usually says online life, but I don't see anyone now. OK, so let me see. Hmm. I saw it in the morning. Maybe they removed it. So it usually says online life. And it also lists the times and dates. So it means Zoom. All, all, uh, all Zoom that we used to have during COVID, that, 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 that's what it might mean. So if it say, says life, online life, it's Zoom instruction. So you are required to log in at certain times, just like you had to do it in um, school. OK, so now let's see in more detail. And I think I want to show you one class here. Well, what you should know about important dates and classes. Okay. So it's art, so ASL. So ASL, American Sign Language, is a very good example of what I wanted to show you. So here, uh, you can see that this CRN, it's a tiny fine print, but this is a very important number. It's co called the course registration number. So once you go through this list and see, okay, this sounds like a class I would like to take, that's the number you would need to write down because you would need it for registration. What I also recommend you to do, just take a piece of paper and write down, uh, okay, this class meets these times, this is that time, and just keep it with you so you keep track of that. So once you click on that number, so uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, can you tell me if you can see a little pop-up window? Yes, I can. Okay. So on any of these numbers, if you click, it gives you the more detail, like drill down information about this course. So here, that's your instructor and it's email. Okay. So here you can say acceptable for credit, CSU and UC. So if you take this course, they will take it as a foreign language requirement to CSU and UC. So it does have prerequisites it says exist. So I just happen to know that you can look up in the catalog, but I just happen to know so that in order to take American Sign Language 2, you have to take some American Sign Language 1 first. So if you're transferring for another school, or if you happen to take a course at, say, Cuesta, uh, you can send us the transcript. It will be applied so you can attend the class. Uh, it does show Santa Maria on the right here. It shows you critical dates for this course. So last day to drop was a refund, and last day to drop, you don't get any refund, so don't worry about that. 
but last day to drop without the W. So what this all means is W's and all of that. So W stands for withdrawal. So you can see the course starts on June uh, 13, and you can drop it without the W on June 20th. So you have one week to decide. And I think you should decide quickly. So once you log in or you go to the class, you look at the amount of work that needs to be done. And for some reason, you realize it will not be doable. So drop the class as soon as you can. So no strings attached, nothing on your transcript, like it never happens. So you have a week for this particular class for this to happen. But these dates change for each course. So look at that. Uh, if, however, you continue with the class and something else happens, so again, you either failing a class or something came up in your family, and we do have different circumstances, you still can drop a class up until July 21st. The only difference uh, is on your transcript, it will be noted W, which is stands for withdrawal. Is it bad? Not really. It does not affect your GPA at Hancock at all. The only uh, thing is we don't want you to accumulate too many Ws because when you apply to colleges, especially transfer and four-year institutions, if you accumulate too many Ws, it does not look very good on your application. And there is a number of attempts you might accept. So try to avoid them. However, if you have to go for this option, it's so much better than a D and an F. Um, there's also a, a path no path option. Uh, I have to mention that, however, if you are looking for college credit, path no path option might not be good for you because it does not really apply to a degree. So let me put it this way. If you need a college course toward graduation or transfer to a four-year institution, go for a letter grade. Path no path is more like a safety net. So if you just wanna take, let's say, I don't know, French for fun. And you can select pass no pass option because no matter what you get, does not affect your GPA, does not affect your financial aid down the road and any of that. So that's like a safety net for, for our students. So in case you, um, you wanna go just take a course for fun. So that's on class. Okay, let me. Um, um, Julia, yeah. I think the one that you are looking for is speech 101. Oh uh, yes, okay, yeah. This is a different. Let me see if it's offered in spring or in summer. Uh, yeah. Okay, let me see if it's offered. So, uh, on the main page, you can, uh, you know, this is alphabetical. But if you select it from the very beginning, you can just do that. Okay, let me see. I'll put P E P. Okay, speech one on. There you go. Public speaking. Oh, here is the option I was telling you about. So look how many sections, a lot. So the gray ones are in person and these are online life. That's what I meant, Zoom. And you can see, unlike just regular online, it does list dates and times. So you will have to log in during this particular times and they will take attendance. Okay, so a lot of classes, a lot of choices. Okay, that's um, class search. So what else I want to talk about is the, uh, in case you got stuck, where am I? What this was, lady was talking about? I forgot my checklist. How do I find information? Very easy. Go to Hancock website, click on quick links. And here, or just type in in search, college now. There are many ways to do that, but that, that's the one I prefer. And you land on, on a page that tells you everything. All the rules, there are all the forms that you can download here. See, all the information for your parents, registration dates, uh, cost to attend, everything is your steps to enrollment, how to submit paperwork. So one important thing uh, I wanna tell you uh, about the plus search. So here, do you see this big blue button that says college now list? 2022, 2023. So that gives you the list of classes that high school students can take. So once you go through uh, our class search, keep this list, and I will put it in the chat in a minute. Uh, keep this uh, class list with you. Just print it or have it in another screen because you can only take classes that are listed here. 
The good thing is, look at that. These are three pages, and they add, added a lot of new classes. So this is another one, and that's another one. They added a lot of classes that high school students can take. So, and you will find everything from every department in here. So once you go through class search, keep it as a reference. And let me put it in the chest right, right away because I do have it on my, there you go. Uh, because that's a handy document. So there is no appeal process. If the class is not on this list, you cannot take it. Okay, so, but there are many. So believe me, you will find everything in there. Okay, that's college now listing and college now uh, web page. Um, no, everything is here. All the forms I checked today that everything is updated and everything is. So let's say you applied for admission, you filled out paperwork, you wait for the response, you set up your portal. So how do we set up the portal? From our main web page and actually everywhere on the web page because the, the gray banner is up here, you click on my Hancock and you end up here. So if you're a new user, never been here, look for your username in your email and click on new Hancock College users, fill out the form and it will bring you there. Okay, but since I am, uh, uh, I do have an account. So let me uh, log in first so I can show you what your page will look like. Okay, so let me switch to um, student view. So once you log in, that's your portal. You see academic calendar here, appointment services in case you wanna meet with a Hancock uh, counselor. And that's an option as a college student, you absolutely can. So that's Canvas. Uh, all online classes are taught through Canvas. For other instructional modalities like in person, not necessarily, they might use Canvas, might not. It's not a requirement for them. But for uh, distance learning, yes. Uh, this is your email. Uh, it will be automatically uh, set, and this is uh, uh, Gmail based. Uh, keep in mind so once you submit it, you are clear to register, uh, college will communicate with you through this email. So don't wait for instructors to send you email to your private email. It's not going to happen. That's the email they use for all in Hancock communications with your instructor, with all other services. So, so that's the email, set it up and check it periodically, especially if you put yourself on wait list uh, for, and I recommend you to do that. So then you will receive an email and you will have 24 hours to register for the course. So check that, what else? There are other very useful things here. The job speaker, if you're looking for a job, you can check out your, your job board. There's OneDrive student services, everything. So, and here too, if you scroll down on the first page, all the information you need. So you see under registration, it says register at drop class. This is where you register for the class. So you receive an email, you have your CRN numbers ready, you click here, you go through the procedure. You can pay fees here. You can see pay my fees. I recommend you to pay fees right away because what happens, uh, they will not drop you from the class for, for, for non-payment. However, there will be a hold in your account. So you will not be able to do much. So uh, you will not be able to order your Hancock transcript. You will not be able to register for another semester if this fee is unpaid. So don't wait until the last minute. Just do everything during the registration and forget about that so you can move on. So if you're not sure, or did I register? Did I do everything correctly? When you click on my schedule here, if it lists the classes you you want, you're registered. If this is a blank page, you're not. And here you can see a video, videos on how to register for a class. So you can watch that. I see it's also in Spanish, so I didn't see that one lately. Okay, so you can check out this video. This is the same that I uh, sent in the PowerPoint as well. Um, here is my English and math placement. So in case you took math classes and you think that the information over there is incorrect, uh, log in, uh, click in here. It takes two seconds to update your record and it's instantaneous. So for example, you register for a class that has a math prerequisite. It tells you, okay, prerequisite, not math. So it stops you. You say, oh, I, didn't, I forgot to update it. So you go back, 
do my English and math placement, correct it right away. You can, you can go ahead and register. All right. So what else is here? Uh, my, if you're wondering what's my wait list position, how long should I wait? Everything is here. So here you can order my official transcript from Hancock or uh, unofficial or official. So official transcripts you will have, uh, and it's probably more um, uh, relative uh, for seniors, who, incoming seniors, I should say, uh, order my official transcript. So you get two copies for free and others, uh, there is a little fee just if you need to send them to your um, school of choice. Okay, so that's the portal. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So I guess I talked about everything else. So uh, ask me anything, you have any questions, I can go back to PowerPoint, look at the paperwork, portals, clusters, you name it. So let me know. If anybody has questions after we sign out, feel free to email me. If I don't know the answer, I'll reach out to Julia to get you the answer. Okay. Any questions? Okay, you go. Guys, all good. All right, looks like we're all good. Okay, well, I really appreciate it, everybody. Uh, absolutely. Like I said, so uh, don't hesitate to contact me if you get stuck with everything, especially in summer. So reach out to me. I'm working. Uh, I will be available to help or find someone who will be able to help. Okay. And I wish you all ace, straight A's in all classes, especially college. Yes. All right. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. And thank you very much, Julia. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.